Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. And it is Saturday. And if you've been with the channel for a while now, you know what Saturday means. Saturday Nightmares, live from New York, our live stream at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Guys, that's not why we're here now, though. I hope to see you all there because, you know, we do have a lot of fun. We share experiences. We talk about pretty much everything paranormal related and then some. Um, just a really good outlet to end the weekend off with. But uh, I've got some encounters that I want to share with you right now. But before we get into those couple links, as many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch is displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions, they were written and researched by Tom Lyons. Narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go and folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I've taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into today's upload, shall we? Okay, guys, so today's upload takes us to Alabama. Um, there is a wildlife management area called Oak Mugley, and it is in four counties, Bibb, Hale, Perry, and uh, Tuscaloosa. Now, where this wildlife management sits is kind of uh southern southwestern part of uh alabama and there just happens to be a correctional facility called bib correctional facility i was contacted by a former correctional officer uh, who at the time was a lieutenant and <clears throat> we talked for quite some time Saturday. Uh, I also Saturday talked to Brad, which Brad and I are going to get together Tuesday night and have an interview set for you guys on Wednesday. Uh, for those of you who do not know Brad, Brad had been on Vic Cundiff's show. Um, kind of didn't like how he was treated over there, not by Vic by uh, the victims and came here to uh, really have, and, and since he's been here, he's felt accepted um, and no judgment passed. And I'm not passing any judgment on anyone who watches uh, Vic's show. He's been doing this for a very long time. Um, really laid the foundation for many of us and and you know that i think people need to recognize that um anyway so brad had hunted a dog man and he also had an experience with what he believes to be a guardian angel so anyway talk to these two gentlemen on saturday now this oak mugley wildlife management area is Rather large, I'm going to set the setting for you. I uh, was contacted by a former lieutenant uh, correctional officer of Bibb Correctional Facility. And the area we are going to talk about is obviously the Oak Mugley Wildlife Management Area. 
it's about 48,000 acres of kind of wetland. This Bib Correctional Facility is located on about 200 to 250 acres of wetland. Um, it's not, it's not a place that, you know, people escape from too often, but there have been a couple. Um, anyway, this Bib Correctional Facility opened up in 1997. This is when uh, the gentleman started. He was just, he started at just a regular CSG, um, just a correctional security guard, and moved his way up. Now I said, listen, you know, I'm going to share that you were a lieutenant. Do you mind? And he said, no, there was about 10 of us uh, that fell under that um, during this time. And he said that he's pretty sure a couple of people had told this, um, not on YouTube, uh, but to a couple of researchers. So he's not worried. He doesn't believe that he's going to get singled out. And I said, awesome. Um, anyway, back in 2009, there was a singular solo prison break a gentleman escaped and they didn't realize that he was gone for about 12 to 13 hours so we had already had a head start on them now this oak mugley wildlife management area like i said is large it's uh part of the talandega or talladega um, National Forest, and where Oak Mugley sits kind of like here, right? So it, and it connects to here. So these two kind of land pockets and Bib is like right there. So when they realized this guy was gone, they were like, he either went north or south, We've got our, we've got a lot, you know, to do. We've got to contact the FBI. We've got to contact the four counties, um, state troopers and park rangers. What and who were involved in this, um, search for this gentleman <clears throat> was corrections uh three of the four counties uh sheriff and of course federal park rangers um F fbi did make their way into the scene but not uh till the very end and i i said that's weird and he said i thought so myself too um Anyway, they start sending correctional officers who are off duty, other sheriffs, and they were pulling in park rangers, not just from the Oak Mugley area, but from other um, wildlife management areas in Alabama. As this is all going on, they're split up into sections. Um, each, each team is consisted of two sheriff, two correctional officers, and one park ranger. And they're given this, they're given their own area to search. Um, The crazy thing is these guys went north and he's been watching uh, Dogman Encounter videos and reading Dogman Encounter books and Bigfoot books. Just he's he's a diehard cryptid um, believer. Knower. Uh, and he was putting things together, not then, but now as he started to, you know, realize hearing different people's encounters, there's four 
cemeteries in this area. Um, there is uh, Sinai Cemetery, Union Cemetery, Shiloh Cemetery, and one other. <clears throat> We're going to talk about Union Cemetery because that's where they were kind of branched off and searching. So we're going to start off with the initial search. Uh, they're broken down into teams. Um, a kind of search procedure is set up. They get a couple of uh, tips. And what they believe is that he had somehow... Um, had a change of pants and only the like kind of white tee that he was wearing, but he had, he had a change of pants. Somehow he got out of his, um, prisoner outfit. What went on then is they believe that he got a ride from either someone he knew uh, or just a random driver on Route 1, which brought him right into the Oak Mugley Wildlife Management North. Um, they did send some units and some teams down into the southern part of the uh, wildlife management but they were mostly focused on this north. They were going on. They were going off a lot on that one tip, uh, which he said was kind of shocking because they weren't split up evenly. There was more in the north, um, or the northern part, northwestern part of it. Now, this inmate population was at the time uh, in two thousand nine was about. 1500 maybe a little more at the time it's now higher than that and that's why it took a little while so they get out there and they are searching their areas um the area that they have there is uh there's some federally paved roads there are some state county paved um county gravel roads um, some walkways, a lot of walkways, some trails, uh, camping areas, check-in stations. There's a target range out there. There's a lot going on. And then there's some other, other roads, which we will talk about later. Other roads. And that is, if you pull up a map of this area and it will say other roads, which is strange because what are other roads? Who are they built by? Well, they were federally funded as we all know. So anyway, they are more north and northeast. They're broken off. They are going. There is another cemetery, Friendship Cemetery, I believe. Um, they had passed that and were heading towards this Union Cemetery um, when over the radios they could hear this commotion, um, yelling, uh, what the hell, what the hell is that? Um, we have no idea what this is. Get, get more people out here. Bring rifles, yada, yada. And a few of the guys had shotguns. Majority of them were equipped with uh, pistols. So then they meet up with this one kind of team. They're talking back and forth. The two correctional officers um, from this other team approach this gentleman that I spoke with and his coworker, they're leery of the sheriff 
and the park ranger just how everything went down. Um, apparently, they were looking in an area. Uh, there's kind of a there's a little bit of waterway. Um, nothing major, nothing like a lake or anything. And but what they had seen, they thought they had seen movement across this waterway, and they're watching it, and they're like, "Hey." Halt, don't move. You know, we have you. We have you surrounded. There are about 300 of us out here right now. We will shoot you. And they, this is on movement where they know they have this section. This is their cordoned off section. If it was another team, they'd be like, hey, you know what? Stop, don't. Whatever this thing is, it doesn't stop. And a sheriff and the park ranger take off running. One sheriff is walking with the other two correctional officers towards whatever this is. Um, as the first two take off running, the three that are behind decide to just take off running too to follow them. Um what turns around when they're all at the other side of this water system, this creek, is a dog man. It, it's bipedal, it was hunched over, and it turned around, spun on its, on its like balls of its feet, and kind of just, you know, what the hell do you want? Like, I'm right here, you're right there. I can kill all five of you. Get away from me. I don't know. You know what? They then just, you know, realize this thing is huge. It's from the correctional officer to the lieutenant that I spoke to. It was at least seven and a half feet tall, at least double his weight, my weight, which would be 450 pounds, solid solid muscle with a brownish dark brown hue long pointed ears and this is daytime so it's an afternoon day not dark but forest dark you know that afternoon kind of you're getting peaks of the sun and its eyes are just fire red they stop and they don't know what to do. Um, the sheriff that's with the two correctional officers pulls out his service pistol and takes two shots to this creature's center mass. Why? No one knows. Um, probably because he got freaked out, but why would he, you know, no one else was doing that the park ranger and sheriff his his partner were in front you're going to take a shot before anyone else has even said words the creature kind of just staggers back a little bit and continues to stare now at the person that shot him and takes like this bluff charge at the other two they all take off running and they get to this other side of this creek. They had this like little clearing area. The creature after the bluff charge turned around and ran um, going towards this Shiloh cemetery. So when the guy, the gentleman I spoke to, this lieutenant, the two correctional officers are now talking to these two, the lieutenant. Uh, we'll just refer to him as lieutenant. They're talking to lieutenant and the other correctional officer. The sheriffs are amongst themselves. The park rangers are kind of with the sheriff, but kind of still off to the side. Um, they're getting filled in. Now, lieutenant is looking at what is going on in the area. You know, he's just, he's, he's very observant. He's been doing his job. 
you know, since 97. We're now in 2009. Um, so 12 years. Plus he was former military. Uh, he was a Marine. And um, he said that he would... <laughs> I wish that I was not, I, I retired a secure or a correctional officer, a correctional security guard. I wish I hadn't. I wish I made my career as a Marine was his exact words. Um, but he's very observant. So he watches the park rangers and the sheriffs and he notices the two park rangers are now kind of off to the side of everyone and using a sat phone. And he makes a mental note of that. So they're discussing, do we just stay together, the 10 of us? Four correctional, four sheriff, two park rangers, and kind of Go in like this line, maybe about a hundred yards apart, and push up. Um, they didn't want to go towards Shiloh, obviously. They then are decide, hey, you know what? Let's stick together. Let's stay away from Shiloh. Let's just, you know. We'll go as north as we can. And if we run into the creature, let's all agree that if it becomes hostile again in bluff charges, we will all shoot at this creature. As they are making this plan, they get a call, the sheriff, and correctional officers, both teams, get a call from the head of who's running the sheriff's teams and who's running the correctional teams. Um, pretty much saying, stand down. This is now... Um, possibly... Uh, an attack or an animal attack or uh, a retrieval of a dead body. For some reason, they think this inmate is dead. Lieutenant's putting all this. Jeff, I, I put it all, you know, I'm putting it all together. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Nobody's, nobody's communicating. These four aren't communicating. We're not communicating with these four or these two. These two, these two rangers, these two federal rangers are being very um, quiet and not willing to share any kind of what should we do? Are we going to find this guy? Uh, needless to say, as they wait here for more um, information on what to do, there's a call over the radio. Inmate apprehended. Inmate apprehended. Um, let's stand down. We're bringing him in. This and that. All right. They, a couple of uh, correctional vehicles and sheriff vehicles are now in the roads, on these roads, going to meet this one team that apprehended the inmate. Um, inmate is now in transport. And... Probably two minutes, three, two to three minutes after that call, inmate is in transport. They hear an eruption 
of gunfire. Um, it was so loud that the people that were whoever was shooting the other sheriff correctional and park rangers all kind of were like and pulled their firearms they had their firearms out at the ready <clears throat> he watches the two fire or he watches the two forest rangers pick up the sat phone the two there pick it up some kind of conversation goes over to one of the uh, sergeant in the sheriff and says, hey, you know, something, something. Um, we have transport coming out to pick this wild animal up that we had just run into. Um, it's dead. Well, now everyone wants to know what the hell it was because you've got five men that saw it and now five men that know or know what was said to them. So five who saw, five who didn't but know uh, are in the know. And then however many were in the team that just shot this thing. So everyone is told to regroup and head back to the staging area. Now <clears throat> they are back at their staging area and he being former Marine, um, there is a uh, Marine base, a National Guard base, Redstone Arsenal is in not in the area, media area, but within a vicinity of about a couple of hundred miles and um, shortly into this kind of breakdown of the staging area making sure the inmate is secure they hear two helicopters coming in to um, this National Guard base, which is pretty close to Bibbs Correctional Facility. And it's uh, two Chinook helicopters land. Um, a couple of Marines get out, which kind of lieutenant is kind of like, what the hell? Why are there Marines getting out of this helicopter? Um, what's going on? All of a sudden, there's, you know, not all of a sudden, but within this time, there are some, uh, not National Guard, but um, not reservists either, but Army there's some reserves and there's army, um, active duty army on the scene, active duty Marines on the scene. They're, they're not, they're not reserves. They're not reservists. They're not national guard. These are active duty on the scene. These two helicopters are there. The sheriffs have long kind of departed. Um, corrections are in charge of the staging area. So they're breaking everything down. Um, there's limited park rangers. He's just watching this, you know, soaking this all up. What the hell is going on? Um, he then sees this transport truck with two Humvees behind it. And it picks up these... Uh, active duty army, active duty marines, and they go into um, Oak Mugley, Oak Mugley, and uh, 
he's like, what is going on? You know, what, if this was a bear, wouldn't the park ring? And he's asking questions like, what, what did they shoot? What, what did y'all shoot out there? Um, the two correctional officers, the two sheriffs, and the one park ranger that had caught the inmate are now separated from everyone. And the, the other five that had this kind of active shoot off with whatever, not a shoot off, but whatever that put down that dispatched this, whatever, <clears throat> um, are separated. And he's, he's figured out who the two correctional officers are that were part of that, um, that kind of unit, that unit that was searching for these men. He's like, I knew right, I knew right off who the hell these men were. I've no, you know, I've known them. I've worked with them. Good guys. So I know, I know what's going to, I know that I'm going to know what went on out there. Well, turns out he's talking the day's done he's talking to his co-workers and uh no one's seen these two they didn't come back in apparently the sheriff didn't no one's seen the two sheriff the two correctional officers or the park ranger they hadn't been back in yet so he's like what is going on this wasn't a bear he starts making some calls and uh, he's got a few friends that are active duty still. Um, his wife's brother works, is National Guard, works at the Air National Guard base um, just kind of northeast of where Bibbs is located. So he gets home and he's telling his wife, you know, what the hell happened? You know, long day, 17 hours, this hunt, manhunt was, you know, we, we got him, yada, yada. But this crazy shit went on. So he's trying to make a couple calls to the two correctional officers. Their wives haven't talked to them yet. Um, they're worried and he's like, no, they're, they're okay. Um, there was no casualties. I just want to talk to him and find out what went on. And they're like, we haven't seen our husbands since they left for work. Some now 20 hours. He gets in touch with his brother-in-law who is much younger than he, um, he was in his 40s, late 40s in 2009. And uh, what was said was that the two Chinooks landed at this National Guard base. They were met by two other kind of very strange looking vehicles um not transport they were military they were military but they were not military i have never seen anything like this vehicles that went to this redstone arsenal from the national guard unit and what was said was, to, by the brother-in-law, there was a large package put into this truck um, in a kind of biohazard chemical bag that looked like a body bag. But it, the men that were handling it were kind of like in biohazard suits for some reason. 
now he's like, what the hell? <laughs> like, what did we shoot? Was this some kind of like toxic bear? Is that why it acted the way it did? But it looked too much like a dog. What the hell was it? Was it a werewolf? Did, you know, is Hollywood not lying to us? And, um, needless to say, the brother-in-law has no more information. I, I got nothing else to share. Six days go by, and the two correctional officers come back to work. Um, Lieutenant says, hey, how are you? What the hell happened to you? What did y'all shoot? What did you guys... First... Where are you guys okay? Where were you guys? How long were you guys away from your family? And what the hell did you shoot? Both men refused to answer anything. They said, all we can tell you is that we were brought to a military base. We were questioned. And we were told not to talk about it. So that's what we're going to do. We're not talking about it. He says, okay. Ten years later, 2019. So one of the other correctional officers left Bibb Correctional Facility. Um, about five years after this all went down. And 2019, uh, they're having this kind of company picnic party thing. And uh, the lieutenant and this other correctional officer are, you know, they're talking. Um, he had not said anything for 10 years. Uh, they were playing horseshoe. And they were on the same team. And um, there was like a horseshoe tournament. They ended up winning the tournament. And um, after everything, the tournament's done. They're kind of just hanging out, smoking a cigar. And... Uh, Lieutenant goes, you know, I know you're not supposed to say anything, but it's it's been 10 years. I asked you once before, you've been asked before, and you've never said anything. What the hell happened that day? And he said, if I tell you, you cannot tell anyone until... I pass away. And he says, okay, why? And he said, well, providing I don't tell anyone and providing this never gets out, um, at the time of my retirement, or if I were to ever, God forbid, be killed in the line of duty as a correctional officer, my family will get a large sum of money. And he's like, how large? And he said, large, large enough for my kids, kids to be able to go to college. And he says, okay, I will not say a word, but can you please like, tell me kind of what happened? And he said, sure. They were walking towards this cemetery called Shiloh Cemetery, which happens to be at the almost northwestern part of um, Oak Mulgee Wildlife Refuge or Management Area. And almost the same thing that happened to the first team happens to them. But it's behind them. They keep walking and they keep 
hearing things behind them, um, little snaps, little breaks. And the five of them are kind of positioned kind of like in a V pattern. And uh, they can talk amongst themselves. They're not too far apart. But they need, needless to say, hey, there's something behind us. I think it's Touch Hole who escaped. Why don't we sit here for a minute and see if we can't apprehend him? So they kind of stop and kind of fan out a little bit. And they're looking away from the area that they're hearing these noises coming. All of a sudden, they hear this kind of growl, this very loud growl kind of resonates through the air and all five of them turn and about 75 feet not yards feet from them is this kind of buff brownish creature from hell with these glowing red eyes, now it's darker, staring at them. As they see this, the park ranger says, we need to put it down now. Shoot. And they all shoot. And as they're shooting this creature, it's staggering coming at them um they put it down the park ranger got on a sat phone called somebody the sheriff one of the sheriffs had called his boss the other two correction the two correctional guards are just like what the hell are we and they're looking at it like what is that what is that Sheriffs are like, we don't know. What is it? You know, they're kicking it. They're not kicking it like, you know, beating it, but they're moving it with its foot, with their foot. And the park ranger says, stop touching it. There's a certain protocol that we do when these things are seen and taken down. We have to wait. Okay. About an hour and a half goes by and all of a sudden they hear this noise. Uh, vehicle noise and there's six military different uniforms different uh, camo three marine three army and one kind of just guy in a suit walking in they the guy in the suit talks to the park ranger, goes back, talks to the six. They pull out this kind of hazmat looking bag. All six, excluding the guy in the suit, put on these hazmat, hazmat suits, zip and bag it up. They're all asked to stay until this thing is loaded, then come back, follow us. It's lo loaded into one transport vehicle. The other in the in the other transport vehicle, the five correctional, two correction, two sheriff, one park ranger are loaded into another. And about a two hour drive later, they are sitting at a military base a very cold room with very nondescript room nondescript table told you don't you did not see anything you do not know what you shot we will not tell you what you shot do not ask questions these are the details 
These are what you will say. This is, this is everything. You're going to sign these papers and you're going to shut up. And this is what you will receive for shutting up. If you retire at a certain age and you do not, this never comes out, you will receive X amount of money in your retirement. If you are killed in the line of duty, sheriff, park ranger, correction, you will receive this money. Your, your widow and family will receive this money and case closed. So he's just blown away. He retired, the lieutenant retired in 2021, right after the old 19, the old vid 19. And um, during that time, another uh, two lieutenants retired and the correctional officer that was the remaining correctional officer out of the two that were on that scene. Um, he took early retirement and, you know, what the hell? He took an early retirement, cashed out everything, you know, got probably, what, three quarters of it and bounced. Took his family and left. So he never... Lieutenant never got to see it, but he got the stories from everyone he knew. So then I'm just like, that's, that's insane. I'm like, the, what happened to the other correctional officer? I'm like, is he still alive? He's like, he's working at another, he's working at another prison. I'm like, do you ever talk to this guy? Nope. He dropped off the face of the planet. He moved. I know he's still alive. I know he's still, you know, but he's not talked to me. I don't know his phone number. I don't know, you know, just kind of separated himself from, but you get this large set of sum of money in an early retirement, a 10 year early retirement. You retire 10 years early with a large portion of money, what are you going to do? You're not going to contact your other, you know, your former, former employees or not employees, but former coworkers. You're just going to live your life. Especially since you've told somebody and you don't know if he's going to tell anybody either, but you just want your money. I'm like, dude, that is insane. I'm like, you guys, <laughs> you guys saw this thing briefly. And then you know somebody that killed it during a prison escape. And he said, yeah. I said, did the prisoner? And Mike, but flat out. I go, did the prisoner see the damn thing? And he said, no. He never saw a thing. He was questioned. They took the prisoner to the military base as well. And questioned him about it. And he never saw a thing. Or so he says. Did he? No one knows. He's still in prison. <laughs> but is he going to tell anybody? Probably not. If he did, obviously, I don't think he did because he's still with us. You know, he's still alive. And this thing was doing bluff charges like a, a crazy person. But to not see the action, you see something that you have no idea what this is. And then you don't see, you, you're aware of the action. You're aware of all these little things going on around you. And you just, at your retirement, 
or during your retirement, you start piecing the puzzles, the puzzle together of what went down. And uh, I said, well, you know, you mentioned the FBI. And he said, that guy that came in with everybody was either FBI or Homeland Security. He goes, I don't know. He didn't show us any badges. He just acted like he was high and mighty. And the way he acted, we just kind of took it like he was. I said, that's crazy, dude. And he said, well, he said in 2009, there was, for those of the people who lived in that surrounding area, in those four counties, no other, no other counties, no other people in Alabama got the notification of this guy escaping. There was a brief news mention of this escape. You'd have to have lived in those four counties to have gotten it. But then after the guy was captured, everything went quiet. It wasn't reported that he was captured. It wasn't reported anything. It was convict missing, believed to be in Oak Mugley Wildlife. If you have any kind of information, contact Bib, contact Hale, Perry counties, and let us know and we will take care of it. So the government shut these men up, shut these men up, shut this guy up, quieted the whole news in this radius area. But if you watched the news in 2009, the summer of 2009, and you lived in those four counties, you will remember that a prisoner escaped. <laughs> Blown away. Blown away. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed this upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. And I encourage you, please look into this 2009 prison escape in Alabama. Um, I do validate and verify everything that I discuss on this channel. Uh, I try and have as much... Uh, physical evidence possible while sharing stuff like this. And I hope you, I do hope that you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting this channel. Your constant support is what makes this channel continue to grow and go. And also what makes it a place where people can share their experiences, theories, and ideas with out ridicule, without judgment, just treated with the respect that we all do deserve. Stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, the most blessed gift we are given. Our pets, the greatest alarm system out there. Friends and family, well, the people that matter. Why? Because these creatures are real. They are out there and they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about. And it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions and never stop searching for the answers or the truth. God bless.